What's up everyone? Back here with another scooter review. This time I'm reviewing GoTrax's G6 scooter. I already reviewed its younger cousin, the G5. But this one is a little bit of an upgrade to that one. It retails for $649 on their website. It's got 10 inch pneumatic tires. And it has a theoretical max range of 45 miles, also going up to 20 miles an hour. Let's uh, try to pick this up and see how heavy it is. I would say it's about 45 pounds or so. And if you want to fold it up, you can with this mechanism here. Very similar to the G5, by the way. You have to lift this up. Pull it forward. And then there's this safety latch here that doesn't allow the scooter to fold down even when this main lever is pulled down. So you have to pull this as well. I'm gonna pull it harder, yep. Before this is allowed to unlock. And then you push this in and you're able to lock it. Now it's ready to bring onto a trunk of a car or the subway if you want. So it doesn't take up as much room or for storage purposes. Seems very secure too. This scooter also has suspension. So it can easily handle some bumps without you tiring out your arms or your feet. Two brakes, front brake and a rear brake. Many scooters, they only have one. A bell. I think it's loud enough. I mean, a bell will only get you too far for those other people you're gonna have to yell and um, yeah that's the basics of this scooter let's turn it on there's three modes for this scooter right now it's in the drive mode That's sport mode, which goes up to 20 miles an hour. Tapping it once changes the mode. Pedestrian mode, which I think goes up to like three or four miles an hour. And if you tap twice, it turns the light on and off. So I'm gonna tap twice and show you what the light looks like in the front. It should be coming out right here. I think I think it needs to start moving first before the light turns on, on the front but it's in the back here so the front light never worked for me in the end even after the ride I tried to turn it on but to no avail that wasn't the only problem this scooter gave me as you'll see later on in this video as I got close to Times Square the motor stopped working and it returned an error code for overheating. So this is most likely a defective scooter from GoTrax and not a very good first impression for me for this scooter despite the uh, initial impressions. Let me try moving around with pedestrian mode in this park. This is only going three miles an hour right now in pedestrian mode. It's very comfortable. I think there's a nice speed for cruising around and not bothering people. But uh, I'm gonna put my helmet on now and take this on a ride to Times Square. Let you know what I think. There's also a little locking mechanism here that you can use for quick lockups when you're in a store or something with a combination but if you're gonna lock it up for much longer I would suggest using something more secure but this is good to have 
I'd like to thank GoTrax for sending me this unit for a first ride and review. It's already on pedestrian mode. Today's date is Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023, about 5.30 p.m. And the temperature is 79 Fahrenheit. Kind of warm for this time of year in New York. We're in Astoria, Queens. The turning at slow speeds is pretty good on this scooter. It handles very similar to the G5. I just changed it to drive mode. This, I believe, tops out at 15 miles an hour. Yes, it does. I also have the cruise control enabled. You just hold it for 10 seconds and it'll enable the cruise control. The brakes work well. Even if you just use one brake, it has enough stopping power. But I would recommend if you use both brakes if possible and don't slam on the brakes too. You don't want to get thrown off the scooter. This is the Crescent Street bike lane, which will lead into the Queensboro Bridge to Manhattan. There's a good test to see if the scooter will perform well with all these bumps in New York City with the suspension. It is in the middle of rush hour, so I expect there to be a lot of traffic now, even in the bike in the bike lane. Nice smooth braking action. I'm going to change it to sport mode. We'll see how fast the acceleration is. There's a 500 watt motor in the scooter. And I'm impressed by the range claims of 45 miles an hour. The G5 has a 31 mile theoretical max range. And wow, the acceleration's fast on this. I really feel that motor kicking in. So far, I'm really enjoying this scooter. The handling's nice, just as good as the G5. The G5 is probably my favorite scooter in that price point. And I think the G6 is even better. All these bumps, 
the suspension is handling it quite well. I also like how quiet this scooter is too. Handles very well. No problem. I anticipate that cyclist was going to move over to the left a little bit. Here comes a speed bump now. See if the scooter can handle it at 20. No problem. I think where we're really going to test the, um, how well the acceleration works is on the bridge to Manhattan. The benefits of riding a scooter here in New York are very apparent with all this traffic. You can oftentimes beat the subway too. walking with the scooter now. This can get quite confusing. I don't, don't really like riding on this bridge. It's so crowded. I think it's one of New York City's most dangerous bridges just due to the clearance. Right now the scooter is uh, having a little bit of difficulty going max speed up this incline. The city does have plans to open the other side of the bridge for pedestrians only and then making this exclusively for bikes and scooters. But it's really pushing its 
time and delaying it throughout the whole process. And oftentimes there's a lot of uh, illegal mopeds and motorcycles here. I would not feel comfortable passing with this little clearance. I'm gonna wait for an opening like right here possibly. And even though the left side of the medians for cyclists and scooters, I wouldn't recommend traveling there if you can help it. It just gives you a little bit more time to react. Wow, someone's shouting on the bridge. You got some road rage there. And always when you're making some kind of turns here in the bridge, it's important to look over your shoulder or in the mirror, see if anyone's behind you. I mean, for two cyclists to pass each other comfortably here, you would have to be where I am, right on the line. Okay. On your right. These should definitely not be on the path there. People ride so aggressively on this bridge too. Oh my gosh, that's so un close and uncomfortable. They're right up your butt and you can't make a left. You don't want to slam on the brakes either. The city really needs to open the other side of the bridge. But despite all that, this scooter is handling quite well.
That's not allowed here. Wow. This person's passing. People don't even give you a clue when they want to pass you or not. No bell, no shout. This is where it can get scary. I'm actually going to turn the light on here, just so I'm a little more visible. I'm going to take this street cross town to Central Park. Slow up, make sure no one's here. Oh, this is crazy. Of course, Tesla driver with advanced safety does not stop for me.
So far, I'm really impressed with this scooter's ability to handle tight spaces and all the bumps of the city. Let's watch out for this cyclist. Not even a warning from that cyclist passing me. Super close. Central Park. Just gonna walk my scooter through these two cars, get to the other side of this curb. Dual brakes came in handy there, stopping for the runner. Quick handling to avoid those city potholes. Going to make a left on 7th Avenue coming up.
the line and make a left turn here is so long. Oh, I forgot there's a bike lane on the other side. Let me cross over from here. Seventh Street. This is Carnegie Hall. They're getting ready for something. Oh, I got an error on this scooter for some reason. E9. I don't know what that means. Let me turn it off. Stop working there. Well, that's not good. What if I tap once, tap twice? Yeah, I don't know what E9 is. Let me look it up. Let's see it. E9 means over temperature, you're serious? Right there. G5, G6, E9 is over temperature.
Well, uh, I'm going to bring my scooter over to the side here and wait about 5-10 minutes to see what happens. But this scooter should not be overheating like this unless I have a faulty unit. All right, it's been about five minutes. Let's take a, see, take a look to see if this is overheating still. No more error code. That is not good if the uh, G6 overheated and it's not even that warm of a day. It's in the middle of October. This shouldn't be happening. Whoa, that's too close, dude. You're cutting it too close. It's pretty embarrassing for this scooter to uh, overheat in such a short distance. And when I finish my video at Times Square, I'll be taking the subway back because I can't trust the scooter to get me back if it overheated like that. I don't want to be stranded on that dangerous bridge and the scooter not working. Fun bike lane maze there.
This has to be one of the worst bike lanes in the city here.